Love that sound. Woodpeckers. There's one over there, one behind me. There'd be certainly no shortage of food in this section of the woods I'm in. So many dead trees, they'd be riddled with bugs and grubs. A woodpecker's paradise. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure to get out here. Let me tell you, away from the news, away from the TV, just to get out of the house. I hope you're able to do so in these strange times. So the reason why I get out today, besides just to enjoy the woods, was I was tagged by Mark Young down in Nova Scotia. And uh, he was tagged by Jeremy from Lone Wolf 902. And the tag is, show us your coffee. So I thought it was kind of a good idea. Jeremy started up just to maybe get to know a few more channels than you're aware of. He tagged a few, Mark tagged a few, I'll tag a few, and we'll see how far it goes. But it's kind of fun to do so because everybody loves coffee out here. Most people love coffee. Everybody makes it just a little bit different and uh, they make it the way they like it. So they're making it right. So uh, yeah, the thing is was to show how we make our coffee out in the woods. And I like cowboy coffee. That's the way I do it. It's simple, you know, it's, uh, it's easy, it's delicious. And I've, I've tried everything. I've tried all the gadgets, AeroPress, I have mocha pots, I have everything. I like cowboy coffee. <laughs> it's the way I do it. So it's the right way for me. So yeah, let's get started. Let's fire up the Trangia. Have a coffee chat. So there's many ways to make cowboy coffee. This is just how I do it. And I start with, oh, maybe two cups of water in my kettle. And I didn't think I was a kettle guy, but apparently I am. I love this one, this uh, GSI stainless steel kettle. And to that, I put about three cups or scoops, sorry. Heaping scoops of this coffee blend. And you notice I add the coffee to the water while it's cold. Some people add it when it's boiling. I add it cold and as it boils, it'll mix on its own. Just like at home, you might have a favorite cup to drink your coffee or tea out of. Out here, I like to use a Cooksa. Here's a little duo I made a little while ago. Beaver tail Cooksa and a beaver tail coffee scoop. Both out of cherry. One of my favorites. I like this a lot. Okay, that's at a boil now. What we want to do is let it boil for about 60 seconds. That's going to allow everything to mix up nice. It's going to allow the coffee flavor to permeate the water. And it's going to make it delicious. That coffee is boiled long enough. We'll just let that settle for a minute.
cuff is ready. So we're ready to pour. And I know if you haven't made this before, you're probably thinking, there must be a lot of grounds in this coffee when you pour it. Well, there isn't really, not as many as you might think. And there's a couple ways you can deal with that. Well, there's several ways you can deal with that. One way is to take a little bit of water and from a height, just dribble a little bit of water into your pot. And what that does is just break up the surface tension of the water and all the grounds that are mixed up inside will fall to the bottom. It just kind of shocks the coffee, okay? Another way you can do it is to simply take a stick, wrap the side of the pot a couple times lightly. That does the same thing, kind of shocks, releases the surface tension, the grounds fall to the bottom. Let it sit for a second or two and you're good to go, good for a pour. There you go. Oh, good hot cup of coffee. Mmm. Perhaps you'll uh, allow me to indulge just for one moment. Just a little bit, just a little something, something. New knife. Thought I'd come out and get a little more familiar with it. Carve a couple notches. Actually, this is a tri stick. Are you familiar with a tri stick? I think Morris Gohansky kind of popularized it, or maybe it was a teaching tool of his, but it's just a stick. You come out, practice a few notches on the same stick. That way you can sharpen your carving skills when you need them. Because you never know when you're going to need them. All kinds of notches you can practice. log cabin notch, square notch. They're all useful to know. And actually it's really useful to be able to do them quickly, right? So just starting this one. This is a root stripper for making cordage. Just a little round notch. And this bird's beak notch which everybody uses for pot hangers. And you just simply go down the stick, create a few more notches. It's good practice. It's a good way to get to know a knife. And uh, this knife is doing a really good job. I do like it. That's for sure. This thing is a monster. Love it. Just hogging out the wood. From Sergeant Edge Tools, the Sespi and CPM 3V. I will be featuring this later in another video. But I really like it. So now comes the part of the video where I need to tag someone. But before I do that, thank you very much to Mark for tagging me. Much appreciated, Mark. I will link Mark's channel down below. 
Uh, I'll also link Jeremy's channel for that matter since he's the one who started it all. Lone Wolf 902. And who will I tag? Let's start with my very good friend Shane, Isle of White Bushcraft. Shane, let's see you make a cup of coffee, my friend. And we'll also try, if you can, DK Thomas outside. I know you like a cup of coffee, Thomas. And thirdly, a fellow Ontarian, uh, Dennis, over at Canoe Hound Adventures. He's the hardest working man on YouTube. He does a weekly podcast with really awesome guests. That must take a lot of time. And on top of that, you know, he does canoe tripping videos and camping videos. So check out Canoe Hound Adventures. Check out the podcast. Really good guests. So thank you as well for stopping by and watching. I'm going to link all three of those channels down below. I do appreciate you spending some time with me. By all means, subscribe if you haven't already. I would appreciate that as well. If you can, get out in the woods, have a little bit of fun. It's good for the mind, it's good for the body. Believe me. Take care, everybody. Be safe. Bye for now.